What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and I'm a man of the people. You guys have absolutely flooded every single one of my strategy videos with how would this apply to Superflex? You're going to make a Superflex video. And I got to be honest with you guys. I get my Superflex fix from Dynasty. I don't play Superflex in redraft leagues outside of the Scott Fishbowl, which is like a big charity league that I was invited into. But I'm a man of the people. You guys asked for it. I'm going to give you guys a bit of a breakdown and kind of walk you through how I'd alter my three main strategies of zero RB, hero RB, double hero RB for a super flex league. So we're going to get right into that. Let's not waste any more time. If you enjoy the video at any point, make sure you go down below, subscribe, leave a like. Let's go. Thirsty, thirsty, trying to choose. I mean, I know I'm critical. My nitty bag. All right, so let's talk about my point of view. And again, I'm pretty vanilla with my redraft leagues. I kind of just prefer a normal redraft, one quarterback, two to three wide receivers, one to two flex spots, just a pretty normal setup. But today I'm going to try my hand on how I'd kind of tweak the way that I play the game in one quarterback formats for super flex. And first, let's sort of get some ground rules out of the way in terms of what these starting lineups look like. I know that a lot of Superflex League have different variations where maybe some are tight end premium. Maybe some of them have 12 starters deep. Maybe some of them are like 20 rounds of drafting. But we're going to operate under the assumption that we have one quarterback spot, two running back spots, three wide receiver spots, a tight end, a flex, a super flex. And we're going to assume full PPR. Now, if you've seen my other draft strategy videos, I'll try to link one up top here. But my main goal is to stay flexible early in drafts. And then after the first three to four rounds, sort of filter those selections into one of the three draft strategies I like to use. Hero RB, double hero RB, zero RB. And the reason I like these three draft strategies is because at their core components, they're pretty similar. The idea is to avoid the running back dead zone and win the flex in rounds three through six in one quarterback formats. And really the only difference between the three is how many running backs you're taking in rounds one and two and how many running backs you need to draft after round six to make up for that first decision. Now, I'm not going to go in depth on the RB dead zone here. We've been talking about it all summer long. We break it down on every one of these strategy videos. Again, if you're not familiar with any of my draft strategy videos from before, please go check one of them out. Now, what we really want to zero in on here is winning the flex because when we add the wrinkle of super flex, it doesn't change a ton for the running back dead zone. We still kind of have an idea of the Nick Chubb, Zeke Elliott's, David Montgomery's we want to be avoiding, but super flex throws a big curveball at the idea of winning the flex because the flex and winning the flex is one of the core components of my main draft strategy where it's one of the most neglected position in leagues. You see a lot of fantasy analysts out there say, oh, this guy can be a low-end RB2 or a flex and be fine. But we actually want to crush our opponents in the flex. We want elite flex options because if we have elite flex options, then we have elite wide receiver options. And then we can crush our opponents who are neglecting their flex and just trying to fill out their starting lineup without worrying about depth and crushing the flex. Now, the question is, how do we win the flex? And when we're just deciding between running backs and wide receivers, right, we're just going to talk about one quarterback for a second here. The answer is simple. You just draft a ton of wide receivers. And this is shown in Rotoviz's Win the Flex tool. And you can see here, it takes into account the projections for each position according to ADP. And you can kind of see how things shake out from there, where for 2022, we see that running backs are projected to outscore wide receivers by a good margin to the first 15 ish picks and then after that the tide shifts to wide receiver for the rest of the draft and that's where we should be hammering out wide receivers because in those high leverage rounds right rounds two three through seven ish that's where we want to hammer wide receivers because if wide receivers are outscoring running backs after the first two rounds then we need wide receivers through our flex to dominate the flex against other people's running backs that are going to be in their flex spots as a general rule of thumb I see the flex position as just an extension of wide receiver. I want to draft wide receivers through the flex and then plus two by round 10. So however many wide receivers you need to fill wide receiver through the flex and then plus two, the plus two, you can say it's kind of like arbitrary, but it's a decent idea that one of them is for bye weeks. One of them is for injuries. Chaos happens in the NFL season. I want through the flex plus two for any variance and then boom, you're good. You want that locked in by round 10. Now, how does this look when we add the component of super flex because we can't just have the hard and fast rule of wide receivers through the flex plus two by round 10 because 
ADPs are all over the place. By round 10, the round 10 players in Superflex leagues versus the round 10 players in one quarterback leagues are much different. Round 10 in Superflex looks a lot like round 8 in one quarterback. So I wanted to actually tweak the Win the Flex tool and add in a Superflex component. Now, this is the same chart, but instead of using one quarterback ADP, it's using Superflex ADP from FFPC leagues. And we have quarterbacks in red, running backs in green, wide receivers in blue, and it completely changes the ecosystem of winning the flex. First, let's talk about this new environment for running backs and wide receivers. We know from that previous chart, without quarterback, running backs lose the battle versus wide receivers around pick 15, making it clear we want running backs in rounds one and two, wide receivers from rounds three on. Now, when we see super flex in the mix and we get these quarterbacks pushed up to the top of ADP, we actually see that running backs and wide receivers converge at that first black line, but instead of pick 15, it's actually like pick 30-ish. So instead of drafting running backs in those first two rounds and then wide receivers rounds three on, I think in Superflex, you want to move that out one round. So I think you can actually go double hero RB by going two running backs in those first three rounds. And then round four is where the dead zone starts. Nick Chubb has an ADP of around 404. He's in my eyes, the first dead zone running back. So now we know the dead zone is pushed back one round. And let's talk about the quarterback side of things. And the red line is the quarterback. Obviously, we want to start two quarterbacks when possible. But at what point does quarterback not give you an edge over running back and wide receiver? And that's what I wanted to solve for. And this is what that second black line is showing, where all three converge at about pick 60. So again, obviously, we want two quarterbacks, but we want to get our two quarterbacks before those lines converge so that we have utility of starting a quarterback in that super flex spot. Because if you are getting the expected projected points of a running back or wide receiver at your super flex spot, then having a quarterback in that super flex spot as compared to wide receivers in that area, right? Like Judy, Hollywood, Amon Ross St. Brown, Elijah Moore kind of go in this Tannehill, Zach Wilson, Goff area. Once they converge, you're probably better off starting one of those position guys in your super flex than one of those quarterbacks. And because they all converge around pick 60, I would say my general rule of thumb is that we probably want to have our two quarterbacks locked in through round five. So that's five times 12 pick 60. Now, if we look at the end here, we see that by pick 150, QBs actually start to gap the other positions again. So I think in an ideal world, you want to get two quarterbacks locked in through round five and then aim for your QB three in like rounds 12 plus where you're just taking upside shots on quarterbacks. And of course, those guys are projected to outscore your KJ Hamlers and Romeo Dubes of the world. Also, the last thing I'll note about this chart is just how steep that quarterback drop off is. If you look at the top here where it goes from like one to like pick six, it's a massive drop off from like Josh Allen through Kyler Murray. You don't see that same kind of drop off from the top end running backs and wide receivers where it's actually much flatter throughout the entire chart. So we not only want to be prioritizing two quarterbacks through round five, but we probably just want to be drafting quarterbacks early in general. So after looking at the win the flex tool, I have a couple guidelines for super flex drafting here. Don't follow these strictly. They are just simply guidelines because again, super flex is like the wild, wild west. Every league is a little bit different in terms of super flex. Weird things happen. ADP isn't the same from league to league. So again, these are simply just guidelines, but these are the four main guidelines I would try to follow in super flex redraft leagues. I would want two quarterbacks through round five. Again, after that round five spot that like round six to round 10 area, you're not getting a massive advantage from drafting a quarterback in that range, which then leads us to the second guideline, waiting on QB3 until rounds 12 plus. I don't think that it's good use of your draft capital. Let's say you start out your draft with Kyler Murray and Aaron Rodgers. I don't think you need to spend like a round six pick on somebody like a Zach Wilson or a Ryan Tannehill. I've seen that happen a lot in super flex leagues. Get your top two guys locked in. Don't worry about QB3 until later because again, after that round five, area hits, you're not getting a massive advantage from drafting a QB3 over the other positions in that area. Our third guideline is to avoid the new running back dead zone in rounds four through eight, whereas in one quarterback, it's rounds three through seven. I would say the, the extra quarterback spot just pretty much pushes everything one to two more rounds out, which then brings us to our last bullet point, which is fill the flex with wide receivers plus two for your bench by round 11, instead of filling the flex plus two with wide receivers through rounds nine to 10, we'll push it out to 11. If you want to push it out to 12, that works as well. So this is going to be one of two mock drafts we have on the slate for today. We're drafting out of the 106 spot. I'm not going to highlight it the whole time so you guys can see all of the picks from other teams, but this is me, Crazy Ambassador at the 106 spot. And 
I got to be honest with you guys. The CPUs on Sleeper, on Fantasy Pros for Superflex drafts are all garbage. You really can't prepare for your leagues using those setups. So I had to go into the Discord. By the way, my Discord's free. I don't really push it a ton, but in the description, you can hop in there, hop in the Discord, talk with the boys, hop into some mock drafts. So we got 11 other guys in the Discord, which means it's shark-infested waters. All of these guys want to fill their wide receiver spots, fill their flex spots. But this is the only way that I could make this happen. So we get... The 106, I randomized the draft order, and this is the first of many very difficult decisions where 106 is a boiling point for me, where I have Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray in this elite tier of quarterbacks, and once you get to the back end of, the, of that elite tier of quarterbacks, it gets extremely tough between, say, a Lamar Jackson and a Kyler Murray a Mahomes versus a Christian McCaffrey, who I have as my 101 and one quarterback leagues. But at the 106, I end up going Kyler Murray, even though in a vacuum, I probably prefer McCaffrey. But I just know how important quarterback is, how important it is that we get our quarterback. And at the 106, there was no guarantee that any quarterback that I like would, made it ba would make it back to me at the 207. And I was right. I think that that was the right decision because we come here at the 207. I was hoping for Dak. I was hoping for Hertz. I was hoping for Russ Wilson. All of them get picked right before I'm on the board. So at this point, I just have to take best player available. And Diggs is my 108 in one quarterback league. So getting him at the 207 in a super flex league feels great. So I go with Diggs here. Feels like a little bit of a luxury pick going a wide receiver here. But I was fine with it. Now we get to the clock at 306. And this is where some regret starts to seep in. I think here I'm waiting for Trey Lance or Tom Brady or Matt Stafford to make it back to me. None of them do. In hindsight, I maybe wish I just went Trey Lance instead of Stephon Diggs here. Now, I will say, in Superflex, the equation for quarterback is a little bit different, where Trey Lance is a little bit more shaky. He has some weird outs where Jimmy Garoppolo hasn't been traded yet, so maybe he gets benched at a certain point. He's an upside swing. And in one quarterback leagues, when the calculus is an eighth-round pick, ninth-round pick, that's completely fine, and you can stream quarterbacks. But if Trey Lance doesn't work out on your Superflex team, there is no streaming quarterback, you're screwed. So it's a little bit of different calculus, and it's why, even though I have Trey Lance ahead of Dak Prescott and ahead of Russell Wilson in my one quarterback rankings, I probably would prefer Russ Wilson and Dak Prescott to Trey Lance in a Superflex. Now, at this 306 spot, I also debated Aaron Rodgers, but he just felt like that next tier of quarterbacks. I didn't want to take in the third round of Derek Carr and Aaron Rodgers. Those guys just don't feel great. So I end up passing on Rodgers we go with CeeDee Lamb who is a one-two turn pick in my one quarterback ranks I think it happens like the 111 so we now have two first round talents in one quarterback leagues I think that that is a fine way to go if you're not taking those quarterbacks early now the 407 comes around and this is what I would call quarterback no man's land where once Kirk Cousins goes off the board it does not feel good reaching on any of these guys like Justin Fields in round four or if I wanted two of there it would have had to been two in round four None of that feels good, and this is where I want to tweak one of those early guidelines where I said we want to aim for two quarterbacks through round five. I think it should really be two quarterbacks through the first three rounds. I think that you should just be trying to get two quarterbacks through the first three rounds, lock those two in place, and be good to go. I honestly wish, looking back at this again, I'm out of my element here with Superflex. I couldn't practice against a CPU. This was the first time just jumping into it with a bunch of my Discord members. Looking back, I wish either this CeeDee Lamb pick was Aaron Rodgers or I, or I wish this Stephon Diggs pick was Trey Lance. That is my biggest gripe. Or if not Trey Lance, then Brady or Stafford, whoever you like out of that group. But I think that this needed to be quarterback or this needed to be quarterback. I think that the move is, though, two quarterbacks through the first three rounds, but then a broader guideline of if you can't make that happen, try and do two quarterbacks through the first five rounds. But if you can't make that happen, it's also not a huge deal. I wouldn't go – I think one of the worst things you can do is pivot to, you know, reaching on Tua or, you know, drafting a guy like Trevor Lawrence in round five or Daniel Jones in round five. I think at that point, you sort of just have to let it go. So we go best player available, A.J. Brown. I love him. We have really sick wide receivers through our three wide receiver spots. Again, this is going to be a one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, and a super flex spot with like six bench spots for this mock draft. Then we come around to the 506, still in no man's land at QB. Felt like I needed to go an elite tight end here. I could have gone DJ Moore, but we already had a pretty big edge at wide receiver. Again, these are three guys I probably have in my top 12. Stephon Diggs, a guy I have in my top five at wide receiver. And as interesting as DJ Moore was to put him in the flex there, now that we're in quarterback no man's land, 
and we're going to pretty much have to not punt super flex, but not have a strong QB2 in that super flex spot. I need to worry about my other onesie positions. And at this fifth round spot, I knew Waller and Kittle wouldn't make it back. So I ended up going Kittle here. I, I will be honest, in a vacuum and in one quarterback leagues, I don't prefer Kittle to DJ Moore. But I just felt like I was in a spot where I needed to go Kittle there and just get an elite onesie because I was forgoing that super flex spot. Now we come back around into the 6-7 area. And I just hammer two more wide receivers. This is an area that is really ugly. The quarterbacks in this range, Matt Ryan, Daniel Jones, Trevor Lawrence, are not fun to pick in this area. Same thing with the running backs. I don't want any part of Zeke, Dobbins, David Montgomery. This is the this is firmly the dead zone in this format. And you're going to get a lot of wide receiver value to sort of fall to you here where we see Cortland Sutton in the sixth round, which is amazing. You see Elijah Moore in the seventh round, Allen Robinson in the sixth. A lot of wide receiver talent in this round, like five to seven area, or maybe I would even say like, yeah, I would say like rounds five and six are really nice for wide receivers in this format. So we go Allen Robinson. That gives us a wide receiver in the flex. And then we get Elijah Moore, a wide receiver off the bench. Again, remember, we want wide receivers through the flex plus two through rounds like 11, 12. At this point, we're pretty committed to a zero RB build. And we come around in the eighth round. We go Antonio Gibson. He felt like a fine value here. I didn't really like any of the wide receivers on the board. Again, it wasn't even that I didn't like the wide receivers on the board. I liked Burks. I like Wilson. Those are guys I was looking at. But again, we're already so stacked at wide receiver. We had nothing going on at running back. I needed to make sure that we weren't putting too many resources into the bench and to get some players that are going to score points for us in that starting lineup. So we go Gibson. I debated Zach Wilson even as well, but I had three guys in a tier. I had Zach Wilson, Jameson, Jameis Winston, and Mac Jones. And I was hoping one of them would fall to us, and he did. And we go Mac Jones. And even as ugly as Mac Jones feels, it's technically a W because, again, remember, the first chart that we were looking at with the two black lines is from FFPC Superflex ADP that says pretty much by like round six on quarterback, wide receiver, running backs, they all converge. Mac Jones in that format goes with the 5'11 in the FFPC. So we technically got our quarterback in round five. He has round five ADP. Is he somebody that is like borderline barely a, an edge over position players? Probably, but he's a second year quarterback. He could kind of, you know, pop off as like a top 15 type talent I think he's fine there again Mac Jones Zach Wilson Jameis Winston are fine and I think one of those three in like round nine is better to me than a two in round five that's just how I look at it personally now we go to round 10 and we'll just kind of break down what I do from round 10 on uh, I stack up on running back archetypes we go Pollard we go Damian Harris we go Kenneth Gainwell we go Khalil Herbert and in terms of zero RB, I think our running backs are great. We have Gibson, we have Pollard, who I think can start right away, both of them. I think Damian Harris can start right away. A lot of buzz about Kenneth Gainwell. I think looking back on this, Kenneth Gainwell will be a massive value here. And then Cole Herbert's just a fun upside handcuff. We'll churn through these guys on the bench. I also think that in a normal super flex league, the bench will be even deeper than this. So you can just kind of go crazy with hoarding a bunch of running backs there for zero RB builds. Then at QB, we took Baker in round 12, which is, again, if you wait this long on quarterback... You want to get you that QB3 in that like round 11 to 12 area. I think Baker is a fine upside swing. If he takes control of that starting job there in Carolina, he's somebody that's a value at this range. And then we end with Wandale. And this is where I broke another guideline. So I didn't get two quarterbacks through round five. And I didn't get wide receivers through the flex plus two through round 12. Round 15 comes. We take our six wide receiver here. So we're actually a little bit thinner at wide receiver than I'd like to be, but we're so stacked at the top end, I thought I could make that compromise and just wait for a Wandale Robinson or even not even take a, another wide receiver at all. I think Diggs, Lamb, Brown through our three wide receiver spots, plus Allen Robinson in the flex, and then Elijah Moore just you know cycling in with Allen Robinson. And if anybody gets hurt, Elijah Moore can fill in for them. I think that that works just fine so if we look at the final team here i think it looks fine right we have kyler murray here we have gibson and pollard who i feel fine in zero rb builds dig cd lamb aj brown is just a marvel to look at you can't make that happen in a real one quarterback league then we have george kittle right elite onesie because again we had to sacrifice our super flex so you have to make up for it at that other onesie position and then we go Allen robinson in the flex i still would treat elijah moore and Allen robinson as like my flexes here and then i would probably just play mac jones in the super flex spot but I do think that Elijah Moore, no, I don't, I, I wouldn't say that Elijah Moore is really making the case first Mac Jones, but I would put Mac Jones here. It's just because I picked Elijah Moore ahead of him, but Mac Jones in the super flex spot, Baker filling in for buys with my QBs, Allen Robinson, Elijah Moore rotating, in, rotating in at this flex spot. And then we have a bunch of upside guys at running back to fill in, in the zero RB build. I think it's fine. Uh, I'm not in love with it. Again, this was my 
first mock for Superflex, it was the it was a one take Drake. I had to just live with whatever decisions I made. This is what I came out with. If I drafted a real team like this, I think I would be fine. I would feel like okay, this team is okay. It's fine. We'll be active on waivers. We'll we'll sort of do our thing. And I think it's fine. If I was to give it like a grade, I would give it like a B, B plus. I think again, if I went with like Trey Lance here at 207 or uh, Rodgers here at 306, I think that we could have looked back and had more of an A minus A team. But again, I think it's solid. Now I'm going to take out my other super flex draft and I'll show you guys that in a second. So this is going to be my Scott Fishbowl team. Now this is a charity league. It's also super flex. And again, mock drafts are tough to set up for this format. So I figured this would also be a good way to show my strategy in super flex leagues and i love this team i would give this one an a plus plus and this is again a charity league it's with like other analysts and fans and like even like celebrities um it's a super flex tight end premium format it's one quarterback two running backs three wide receivers one tight end three flex spots and one super flex spot now with this team we waited on wide receiver until round six which is really out of character for me. You guys know I like to go wide receiver often and early. But at the one-two turn, we go two quarterbacks out the gate. And I think the one-two turn is probably the best spot for Superflex where you can just double tap. Like, you can go two quarterbacks up top with, like, Russ, Hurts, Dak. Or you can pair one of those quarterbacks with a guy like Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. I think Eckler will probably make it to you there as well. Devontae Adams. So you get a lot of really elite options there. And this was a third round reversal so the 301 comes back to us and in tight end premium Kyle Pitts is a snag there I think Kyle Pitts goes a lot of times like mid-second in tight end premium so that's fun also it's a tournament format it's like a fun charity league why not take an upside swing with Kyle Pitts and then the 4-5 turn comes to us and again this is really out of character for me we wait on wide receiver until round six but Javante Williams is RB 13 at the 412 felt amazing same thing with James Conner there and here's the thing with Superflex. I think you can definitely wait on wide receiver, but you have to be sure to really hammer them. If you go like this, where you don't draft a wide receiver until round six, you have to really hammer them. I think, again, I think the move in Superflex is to probably get your two quarterbacks drafted through the first three rounds, maybe a running back early, and then hammer wide receiver and tight end. And that's what we did here. And when I say hammer, I mean hammer. We took six straight wide receivers. We go Hollywood Brown, McLaurin, then we get crazy value on Jerry Judy and Darnell Mooney. And then we get the two rookies and Traylon Burks and Garrett Wilson. And now boom, we have wide receivers through the flex. Now, what I will say is with three flex spots and three wide receiver spots, this league is already really weird. So that's six wide, that would be six wide receivers through the flex plus two would be eight. So you would want to have like eight through super flex, I guess like eight wide receivers through round like 11 or 12. That's almost impossible. Uh, but we do get Two wide receivers on the back half where we go Jamison Williams, Rondell Moore, who I think are both kind of fine guys that you could maybe get in like round 11, 12 uh, in normal leagues. Then we have some running back work where, again, this is sort of the overarching part from double hero RB, which is what I would call this build. If you go double hero RB where you go two running backs early, you don't have to hammer those running back two archetypes. And I know it looks like I took a lot of running backs right four on the back side, but in a 22 round draft, I only ended up with six running backs, so not a ton. If I invest in running backs early, I'm not going to invest in them a lot later on. So I go James Cook, who I think I got a great price on here, and then Tyrion Davis, Sony Michelle, Raheem Mostert. Don't love the Raheem Mostert pick on top of Sony, but I have, I mean, in ADP, Raheem Mostert goes ahead of Sony Michelle, and I don't mind just getting two swings at like the same ambiguous backfield. I could always just cut one of them, and then we have a bunch of tight end swings, which. I mean, Ingram, Hooper, Trey McBride, we already have pits, but it's a tight end premium. You can flex tight ends in this format. So I just took some swings there. Now that is going to do it for us today, fellas. Again, a little bit of a foreign format to me. Tried my best to sort of give you guys as much of my one quarterback strategy videos sort of packaged up into this one super flex video for those of you guys out there that have super flex leagues and super flex home leagues. Hope you guys go dominate those. Uh, I'm going to try and start altering some content towards Superflex. I know it's really growing in this space. Again, I don't love it for redraft. I just get my Superflex fix in Dynasty, where I think it just makes more sense. But I don't know. Maybe I'll look into sort of adding Superflex uh, rankings to the Patreon, all that good stuff. But I will say it is an absolute headache to have to alter one quarterback to Superflex like once a week. It's a tough conversion. I'll see. If there's enough demand for it, I'll think about it. Um, but yeah, 
that's going to do it for us today. I don't really have anything to push here. This was a video for you guys. Again, a lot of you guys were asking for super flex draft strategy videos, and I do feel bad making all these draft strategy videos and leaving you guys out. Uh, I know auction guys also want me to do that side way less of an audience for auction than there is super flex. So maybe next year on auctions, but wanted to give you guys something for super flex. So you guys don't feel left out when I'm making all of these draft strategy videos. And then also a way where you can watch this video, sort of see the guidelines that I've set out. And then my future draft strategy videos, you can kind of figure out how to filter those through the lens of super flex after watching this video. So I hope all that made sense. If you enjoyed, make sure you down below, subscribe, leave a like, and I will see you guys in the next one. I got the jokes, I got the jokes. Ten oaks, Adam's on. Foolies, glad I'm on. Even my haters kind of glad I'm on. Rest in peace to my bag up on. Rapper, song, singer, suspended subpoena from Mr. Me.